Okay, welcome to another AQA Comp 1 2013 Programming Exam Solution Tutorial. We're going to look at another brute force, and this time we're going to brute force the rail fence. So basically, uh, I'm hoping that uh, we will show how we can actually decrypt some text, but where we don't have a key. So we have no idea what the key is, but we can still decrypt it just by trying every key basically. Uh, there's some limits to this though for the um, rail fence rather than Caesar cipher. Okay, I'm hoping you know the usual stuff, that you've watched my brute force video, that you've read the pre-release, that you're reasonable um, on your VB. And um, just as an extra little thing, we're going to write to a text file rather than to uh, just to the screen, just, just to do something different basically otherwise it's really similar to the Caesar cipher uh, I would apologize I've got a little bit of a cold so if I sound a bit bummed up I'm sorry so pretty much the same as the Caesar cipher we're going to create a new menu item create a new case option in the main then we're going to loop through lots of values of n we're going to keep consistent methodology to the rest of the case statements but this time we're going to write to a file and also we're going to um, limit the upper value of n. Now for Caesar cipher the upper value of n is obviously 26 because you can't that's how many letters are in the alphabet. But for the rail fence it's half the number of characters in the string. I just want to sh quickly show you why. Uh, just got a little website up. If you've not been on this website by the way it's awesome. If you if you're enjoying your Caesar if you're enjoying the ciphers then uh, this black chamber site is is is, the, is tops really, so let's just create a uh, rail fence, and this algorithm is just slightly different because it uh, takes out the spaces, but we can still see the idea. So hopefully this is something you completely recognise from the uh, pre-release, and we've got the rail fence. We've got six rails effectively, and we're writing down them so that when we actually create the text it's like a gobbledygook which is lovely but let's say I now increase this to 36 I've just I've clearly gone for something more than the the cipher text let's create the rail fence we now end up with so many rails so many lines that all of the code is still being written sequentially so if I was to create a ciphertext based on that, it doesn't encode it. And even if I went for something half this, let's say 16 for the sake of argument, I'll say 18 just to be safe, and I create a rail fence. Okay, it looks pretty encoded, doesn't it? In fact, it might be. We might, might have to increase that to 22 just to be sure. So create a rail fence. Yeah, okay, that's, that's definitely going to uh, fall out at some stage. So now, when I create my ciphertext, I can clearly see fox jumps. I've definitely got some of the text not encoded. And that's because um, I've effectively got more rails than I have half the number of characters. And as long as this is below... Um, half I sh you should be safe really so if I go to 14 and just create the ciphertext to be quick oh sorry create real fence create ciphertext there's no text in there that you can um, th that you can that you can discern so what we're just going to say is and there's a variety of ways of doing it but we're going to say if we keep the number of lines to less than half the number of characters Let's go back to that. Uh, we're going to use this bit of text to test it. I think you should probably expect that in the exam they're going to give you some encoded text. So encrypted text to decrypt. Uh, I doubt it would be very hard, but just, um, I don't know, just proof that you can use the program. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing you how to create a new main menu item, but obviously I have. Uh, I've left the Caesar cipher in there just so that it 
you know we can see how this little brute force bit has been built up um, there's obviously two there's obviously two spaces there between k and n i have no idea what it will be but this is just one possibility right let's have a look at actually enco uh, coding this so we'll jump to vb and just to orientate yourselves we're in the main sub procedure and this is in fact where we're going to write all of our all of our stuff so what should we do first we better create a case statement so let's add a new case um, m and now let's display the ciphertext because that's what we always do and before we start doing the rest of the algorithm we just need to sort out the file opening and closing because we're going to write to file rather than write to the screen so I do file open and who cares what we call it but I've called it forced rail output I'm just going to do it as a text file, I can't bother to a binary file, it doesn't really make much difference but it's just a little bit clearer for this demo and uh, output and write and I suppose better do file close as well in fact whenever I'm doing text files whenever I put in a file open I always put in a file close straight away just so I don't forget to do it now in between there we need to actually create all of our output so we're going to have another for loop and this time we're going to have our forced key going from 2 through to uh, the length of the ciphertext divided by 2. And we'll actually go all the way up to that. You know, I know I said less than, but we might as well go up to something equal to it. And then we're just going to, exactly the same way as we did for the Caesar cipher, uh, assign the plain text. And we're just going to decrypt using rail fence with the forced key. So the first time this goes round, it'll be value 2 then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then you get the idea. All the way up to half the length of the uh, ciphertext. Right, uh, we need to output it now. So um, we'll do a print line, and I'm going to put a line exactly the same as I did for the Caesar cipher, but it will get written uh, to the file rather than to the screen, and then I'm going to write the plain text, and I'm going to put in a blank line just so that it's really clear on the on the text file and that's it it's uh, it is a nice little solution uh, certainly doable in the time of an exam <coughs> so hopefully you can see uh, all the key elements if you don't know how to open and write to files <sighs> I don't know it's it's tricky for the exam board to examine the writing to files it's also something that um, they haven't specifically said to us that we need to make sure that uh, the exam accounts have definitely got file write access. But on the other hand, they need to anyway for the creating of the exe. But I just get the feeling that they would have given us some kind of warning that uh, you know, we need to make sure that students know where files get written to. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe they don't need to say that. But... Uh, I'm, I'm not massively expecting a file writing exercise to pop up, but I think it's important that you know how to write files at the end of your low sixth year of computing. Right, we better test this, haven't we? So, <coughs> let me just quickly r run a test. Okay, let's input the plain, t uh, sorry, the, the ciphertext first. So that's a D. And we're going to paste in what we've already got. Paste. And hit enter. And now we're going to choose M. And it should display the ciphertext. And then it appears like nothing's happened. But if I go to the debug folder, and you really need to know where this is, if you don't, uh, find out pretty damn quick. But... Uh, it's in your projects folder and it's oh, better show you. within the default places within Visual Studio 2010 in projects you go to the project that you've been working on and of course there should only be one for the exam and you go to the bin and you go to the debug bin and that's where it should be so let's open this up and you can see we've now got a list of all of our different keys and hopefully one of them should make sense 
and it's saying that the key was 6. So what we've done is we've gone through every single key between 2 and half the length and we've outputted it to a file and it's as simple as just reading it down. And also these, these are brute forcing techniques um, certainly in terms of if you if you haven't got secure passwords you can just have a massive dictionary full of likely passwords and the uh, person trying to brute force can just work their way through them um, anyway I better stop waffling there so we've done another brute force with a bit of a file write and seen how that has worked and uh, the next one that I will do is to brute force the uh, uh, steganography and then uh, I'm going to do a one that isn't actually on the list or maybe I can't remember if I should add it to the list but uh, on the ciphertext not the ciphertext on the um, black chamber this nice little thing to display the rail fence like that I think that would be quite a fun thing to do so I'm going to create a, a pest to, to show how that's displayed as well Okay, hopefully you found that.